right, Therapy Thursday is here. It's where we just talk it out sometimes. You know what I'm saying? We work it out with our brilliance. Ooh. Sometimes we're brilliant. Sometimes we let Davi talk. Mm-hmm. All right, so Dr. Davi is in the building. Make it He's, break up with your girl. I'm yeah, exactly. You. He'll, re- he'll ruin your household. I'm going to keep it real for you. Yeah, but sometimes too real. Tell like you what when, you need to hear. We, we give the compassion of our medical uh, expertise. Yeah. You just tear the Band-Aid off. Yes. Exactly. No matter how many s- stitches you rip. No by anesthesia. Tearing it off. No <laughs> anesthesia. You nah. just tear it off. All right. All right. Meredith MD is prepared for And I'm you. the sugar coater, but we'll be honest with sugar you. Sugar coater. And I come with stirrups. Yes. I'm Orlando BGYN. <laughs> I'm here for you should you have any kind of frothy discharge. All right. So <laughs> how about this? 888-429-0941. We have one that's open. For the room, it Mm. says, I've been dating this guy for eight months. As far as we are both concerned, we are meant for each other. We dated in high school, but for like a month, and we were just jits. So we lived together, and Monday, his nine-year-old brother found his mom deceased. This broke my boyfriend, obviously, but my boyfriend now has custody of the nine-year-old, meaning he came to live with us. I have a two-year-old of my own. We became parents uh, of two overnight. All I want to do is be there for him and his brother, and I'm sure we will get through this. But do you guys have any advice on handling this? Words of encouragement, I need it, and send positive vibes our way. That is out of the three, five. Anything and everything you can do to help the children kind of get assimilate, just get into the household, into a new rhythm. Um, you know, I I would try my hardest to make sure that the kids kind of get into a routine. The kids are the most important thing at the moment. Once they're set up in a routine with their rooms and everything and schools put together, then I feel like you can work on your relationship. But the first thing, you got to work on the kids, in my opinion. These are the trials and tribulations in relationships and just in life in general. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that you look back on and you'll be like, this was something we got over and it made us stronger on, on the other side. In, in the short term, in the day by day, it's going to be hard. It's going to be so difficult. Everything has changed. Your whole life has been put upside down. But when you guys get on the other side of it, your bond will be unbreakable. You're um, talking about that you became a parent of two overnight. Yep. Um, and that's something you can handle because you're an adult. Adults, uh, to whom much is given, much is required. So you can handle that. But what you can also do is not do the traditional adult thing by being the only person who gets to talk. The nine-year-old is not a baby. So a nine-year-old is going to have some opinions. And even though they're rooted in a nine-year-old brain, there's going to be some validity there because their life has changed immensely. You think your life has changed? Their life has, has changed a lot, too. And there's loss involved in that. So listen to the kid. Let the kid tell you if they're happy. Let the kid tell you if they're comfortable, uh, if they need a little bit more attention, if they need a little less attention. Counseling. Make sure you're listening to the child. I mean, I wouldn't immediately throw them in counseling, but I would keep that available for them as well. Yeah. But just make sure that you are opening the line of communication with them so you can have the best outcome. All right? So that's I, I, our prayers go out to you. You got and this. You, you, you definitely got yeah. this. And, and seeking out all the information that you can. Uh, is showing that you are committed to this for the family. And and, and you're doing it for the right reason because you and your man are a team. His woes are your woes. So, you know, God bless. Mm. All right, let's see. What else we got? I got one. Um, Hi, freaks. I need your help. We had someone move in with us because they were going through some things and is a family member to my husband. But I grew up in my life grinding in my mind. I work hard and get rewarded, but this person has zero work ethics, flat out lazy, depressed, maybe even got nothing going for themselves, no kids, meaning no limitations, and they are okay with that. I have no idea what to do or handle or how to handle this person. I don't want to be insensitive to the mental health issues that they may be going through and whatever, but um, I ain't got no handouts. I have no idea, and I feel like they're overstaying their welcome. This house has expectations and has <laughs> rules. Mm-hmm. And I get them. You know, one, one thing is being lazy and unemployable. That is separate from if you can't go in, to work, you have responsibilities in living here. Nobody, nobody gets a free ride. So nobody. if you're, if, if, yeah. if you're, if you're going to be here, you're going to have chores or you're going to have tasks that I, we expect you to to handle. And if you can't or if you don't, then we have to have another conversation because this can't last in the long term. All right. All right. 
I got that. Put your foot right, down. It's here. okay. Out of the 941, it said, Freaks, uh, I got a traffic stop that resulted in me getting arrested for weed. Ooh, weed. It was a mistake, and I'm owning that, but my girlfriend's dad now doesn't want her in the car with me and is blocking everything that we try and do. How do I get him back on my team? He was feeling me before this. Now he doesn't mess with me. I mean, you have to prove yourself, right? I mean, you're talking about a child here. <laughs> as can, a, uh, as people a, make mistakes, As a though. parent, I will say his the parent's job is to protect their kid. Yeah. They could try and be nice to you all they want to, but realistically, they want to try and make sure their kid is going to be safe. Mm-hmm. I'll send my kid off with you as long as I know they're safe and you return them at the right time and unscathed. If you out there making these kind of bad decisions, then I probably do have to pull back the reins a little bit until you show that that doesn't represent you. Now, your job is to, t- to teach that dad that this isolated incident doesn't represent you and you fall on the sword and say, yo, you, you said you're owning it, but I, maybe you're owning it legally, but you got to own it with the dad and say, I made a mistake, you know, maybe this whole legalization of it or whatever uh, or, you know, medical marijuana thing has got me a little confused where I thought I was able to do it and drive or whatever, how, whatever you got to do to explain it to him, to let him know that it was a mistake that you own and that, hey, I'm going to be responsible with your daughter. Maybe take a test or something. I don't Who knows? I don't know. But you got to win me back. Earn your respect back. You got to win me back. Yeah. I'm not really rocking with you like that. We're not high-fiving each other and watching the game no more. You have my daughter out there caught up. I don't, uh, yes. I don't, I don't want her with you. Yeah. And, you know? and, you know, remember, this can be temporary. Right. You you can change dad's opinion, especially because you said at one point he liked you. Yeah. Now he's not feeling you. Not right. feeling you. But, yeah. you know, he you can, can, you can win him back. Yeah, yeah. we mad. Yeah. <laughs> we mad. Ain't no problem. Daddy's getting mad. She and, got a good dad. Yeah. And, and that's kind of like what you signed up for if you're dating someone whose father is active and he he's he cares yeah, a lot. Yeah, because it could be the other side. Right, yeah. right. You could have had a daddy that'd be like, I got pop too, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you don't really want that. Hit me All up right. next time. I yeah, got you. I got you. My blood. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, you don't want that there. Because they out there. All right, 888 Therapy Thursday, part two, next. Therapy Thursday, part two, 888 If you got a question, we got you with uh, some sort of answer. We try and give you a good one, but sometimes we got to keep it real, and then that's when Dobby comes in and pretty much breaks up your household. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, I'll let y'all keep this one real. It's out the 813. It says, good morning, Freak Show. The question is for the room. When you're in a relationship, do you feel the need to ask your partner if you can go hang out with friends and vice versa? No. Asking permission. No, you don't ask permission. Out. That's a bad word choice. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, you want to check with them to make sure that that night is okay with schedule wise. You want to. It's not asking permission. That does sound like permission. <laughs> no, you want to. No, because well, first of all, I, I have kids, so I'm not just gonna dip and not tell them what's going on. Like, hey, do you got the kids tonight? Blah blah blah. We're yeah. doing this. Are you doing something with work? Are you going to a lightning game? Whatever it is, I want to make sure our schedules are good. Take the kids out of it. Yeah, it, same thing. Like, I mean, if you take the kids out of it and it's just you as a couple. You still want to be considerate of that partner, right? Like you don't want them making dinner and you ain't coming, yeah. you know, right? You know, exactly. So, so communication Respect. isn't. Per- I think the word choice makes it rough. Where you asking, you know, do you have to clear it with somebody else? No, you're an adult, right? Mm-hmm. You know, but you should still be very transparent. I, I think yeah. in, in what what you're gonna do, and also if there are things or people or situations that your partner doesn't want you in, or people they don't want you with, hanging out with that guy, you should kind of avoid those without them having to tell you. If you respect the relationship enough, yeah. If you if you're a, being an adult and you're like, because the big argument is that people are like, hey, I'm an adult, I don't check in with nobody. If you're an adult though, you also don't have to hide anything, and you're like, hey. This is what I'm doing because there's a consideration there. Like yeah. if somebody's making a dinner or if they're expecting you or if they wanted you to do something with them and now you're not available, well, let rude. them know. Yeah. Let them know. You just let them know. So be yeah, considerate. I have a I have one that just came in. It says right, anybody. Okay. And I really feel like this is for you too. My husband has had issues with communication. We've had infidelity on his part before and we've moved forward. But, but they gotta do with us. Yeah. Why you, we don't know about that. that. Hold on. Why did you push that I didn't over mean that. I'm a little bit of oh. Oh I think we God. should be. Let me get to the meat. Here go the dirty man. <laughs> oh okay, okay, all right. Go ahead, go ahead. They moved past and forward, past the infidelity, and it was a huge point upon reconciliation that um, they have their communication worked on a little bit more. 
Well, things have changed. Initially, he agreed and also told him my moves, and it was mutually uh, met. Well, lately, he hasn't been holding up his end of the deal. I don't think he's cheating again, but it's hard for my mind not to wander there. What can I do to get him to see this bothers me, and I need reassurance for him because I need to feel more secure in my marriage? Okay, uh, so in essence, you basically went to court and the settlement judgment was that both of y'all got to do a certain amount of communication and be accountable Mm. following each other's locations whatever it is that was the whole thing that don't change if you get out of court that settlement don't go away i think so you got therapy right more of a therapy type thing but what i'm saying is like the you got caught Mm -hmm. and there was a way to get back in yeah yeah so now you got to hold up that end of the of the bargain you're the enforcer in this like you're the person that says hey you got busted. I didn't. Right. And to make my mind at ease, we got to check in and keep keep our communication key. You're falling off on there, and I, I don't say, I'm not saying you're doing something, but it's making me feel uneasy. So why don't we just, you can't just not pay your fine. Yeah. Right. Your I fine agree. is this whole check in. Yeah. Stop making payments. Right. Ah. Yeah. You're stop making payments after yeah. a couple months. Like, I, no. I agree with you. You go to jail for I, that. I'd like to add, I think uh, specificity in something like this is important where it's not just you haven't been checking in like you're supposed to. I think if you can point to specific times and incidents that, like, like for example, last Saturday, I didn't hear from you till midnight. That really bothered me. It brought me back to a place and try to be specific and. I'm trying to move forward. You're taking me back. And I don't essentially know what else put the ball here. in his court yeah. to change and check him with it. Specifics are real. Because yeah. guys, just to tell you, I mean, we always try and keep it a buck. Guys hear specifics and we know you're serious. We hear generalities and you just talk. You just talk. Oh, like, you hear wah, 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 It's wah, like that. Wah, wah. Yeah. You don't, you don't, but, but if I hear, hey, Saturday night, because you, you think, oh my God, what was mm-hmm. I doing Saturday night? Matter of fact, if you just look at him and say, so you cheating on me? And he's mm. going to say, what do you mean? It's like, well, I don't know because you're not communicating with me. And so if I start thinking you're cheating, then we're going to go back to that craziness. Let's just keep our communication key. Conversations That's a heavy word to throw out there, too. Are you cheating on Mm -hmm. me? No, I'm not cheating on you. Well, I don't know because at midnight on Saturday, like that, you was out in the streets. Yes, Mm -hmm. yes. I I ain't hear from you till 2 o'clock in the morning. (laughs) I got one. Ain't nothing open but sin and legs. That would be a problem. Um, This is for Orlando the father. Oh. Checking in. Here we go. My 13-year-old, <laughs> not father O, da- oh. daddy O. Okay. Right. <laughs> My 13-year-old daughter just got caught in lies. She's been skipping class and has failing grades. She's been having boyfriends when she's not allowed and has been smoking weed. She's been telling me that she is depressed and has had thoughts of self-harm. I'm trying to get her to a therapist, but what do I do until then? I want to be supportive, but I don't know how because she won't let me in. Mm, that's a tough age. Man, oh, that's a lot. Uh, I, I, I would, I would say, um, damn. I mean, like, there's a lot of of caveats to that, and I would say that you have to spend some more time, and and make make. You remember how you used to get in trouble and they used to make you go to your grandmama's? Yes. Yeah. Because grandmama was gonna be there in your face the whole time. Mm-hmm. That's one of those old school things that was really valuable because that attention. You know, while it didn't fix the fix it, it kept them out of the trouble. And so that means that she's making uh, it's a she, right? A yes. daughter. Yeah. She's making decisions that um, are bad on all ends. So you kind of got to circle the wagons and get the family to like really get around her, show a lot of care, a lot of concern. But you can also be stern and show a lot of anger in the decisions. Make sure that you don't let your kid think that their decisions are them. I'm mad at what you did and I'm mad at you. I hate what you did. I don't hate you. Right. Separate those two things because your kid is everything is so everybody's coming down on me and everybody's this and everybody's Especially that. Especially at that age. And you come down on them, it's just going to add fuel to the fire. So definitely separate the sin from the person and um, and, and just circle around them and try and get them to understand that, that the decisions that they're making are going to lead down a way that they don't necessarily want to get with, like that scared straight thing or like introduce them to some ways that you could show them the fallout of what 
the decisions that they make, and especially at that young age. I think that the the skipping class, the failing grades, the smoking weeds, the acting out, I think a lot of those sound like the symptoms of the depression. Mm-hmm. I think if we can kind of, and, and I know you said therapy, and it, what do you do until then? I think the root cause of this is the depression, and I think if that gets better, a lot of those other things will start to improve. But make an appointment for a therapist. Don't put it off. Go ahead and see a therapist. Yeah, Book and even if, in, even if in you now. can talk to a therapist. Like, yeah. I mean, if like, I mean, if you can go talk to somebody first, you know, and say, hey, here's my situation or, or you know, Google it or whatever. But if you if you have a work program where they like we have here, yeah. they, they have an employee program that you can go and get some sort of advice and some sort of periodicals and stuff until your kid is ready to go in there and, uh, and kind of join the process. But it ain't easy, but yeah. uh, you, you can definitely handle it because you ain't out there by yourself. There's a lot. You see a lot of people texting in saying yeah. they went through the same and, thing. And being 13 these days seems like it's harder than ever. Yes. It Social is. media, all that crap. It is. 13. I was, man, I was video games at the house. Yep. With yeah. Lemonade. I just wanted to be a baseball <laughs> player. That's all I'm saying. Like, I mean, that Basketball way, I player, baseball player. Baseball, player. baseball at that point. Yeah, yeah. It changed. Yeah, yeah it, changed. <laughs> it changed. It changed when he moved to the hood. <laughs> 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 Mama, I'm going to be a basketball yeah. star. He came home with a basketball. His dad was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Mama, we moving. Right. Orlando and the Freak Show. Therapy Thursday is a wrap. We tried to help, all right? Wow.